Neuralink starts with a surgeon drilling a hole in your head about the size of a coin. Then a robotic arm carefully inserts the ultra-thin, flexible threads into your brain. These threads are finer than a strand of hair and are equipped with electrodes that directly interact with the cells in your brain. This implant is capable of interpreting your thoughts and applying them to real-life actions. Monkeys are being killed to advance the technology of Neuralink. A pause for the gasps. What's that? Old news? Articles dropped this bombshell in 2022? So why make a video about it now in 2024, I hear you ask? I'll tell you why. I'm not a news channel. Also, while itself announced three years ago, I recently learned about Zuckerberg's company working on a non-invasive technology in the same field as Neuralink. You might ask yourself, what field is that? One word. Technokinesis. I don't think that's what they're calling it, but the effect is there. Meta's EMG wristband works to offer its users the ability to control their device using micro-movements in our muscles, a near imperceptible thing to us. Sure, Neuralink's brain chip is more direct, but the brain signals used to direct our hands to move left or right are actually one and the same. Unless they come out saying they found a way to draw your thoughts or have our internal dialogue be written out with the thing, which why would anyone want that stuff to be in the hands of big tech, its applications remain what they are, reading and interpreting our brain signals to move and click. First, I think it's important to pull things back a bit. I'll admit it, when I was 20 back in 2013, I thought Elon was doing great things. He put his face on so many cool companies like Tesla and SpaceX that I assumed he was the one coming up with the ideas. That facade fell once he began engaging with meme communities. I'm like most people in that I didn't follow this guy all that much. So the more he put himself out there, doing meme reaction videos, smoking weed on Joe Rogan, and then turning right wing right before allegations came out against him, I was like, okay, this is who he is. And then he bought Twitter and became a worldwide laughing stock. Cope not, young men, cope not. Role models are like a little knowledge, a dangerous thing. Don't have them. Also, try not believing in people's words, but their actions. Next, I think it's important that we understand the bigger picture of animal testing and monkey testing. What Neuralink has done and is doing to monkeys, while uniquely terrible in that they're drilling holes in their heads, is not unique in its disregard for monkey life. The roots of animal testing stretch back to ancient Greece and Rome, where scientists like Aristotle and Galen conducted experiments on animals to understand anatomy and physiology. These pioneers used animals like pigs, monkeys, and even the occasional unlucky human, laying the groundwork for our modern understanding of biology. Back then, experimentation wasn't exactly conducted with sterile labs and lab coats and safety goggles, so it was more like, hey, let's see what happens if we feed this plant to that goat. Fast forward to the Middle Ages, and things got a bit uh, medieval. Animal testing took a backseat for more um, creative methods of scientific inquiry. Torture devices. It was torture devices. But fear not. The Renaissance brought with it a resurgence of interest in biology, and scientists once again turned to our furry, and not so furry, friends for answers. It wasn't until the 19th century that animal testing really started to take off, thanks to advances in medicine and technology. Suddenly, scientists had access to all sorts of fancy gadgets and gizmos, allowing them to conduct more sophisticated experiments on animals. This period saw the rise of vivisection, the practice of dissecting live animals for scientific research, which, let's be real, sounds pretty gruesome by today's standards. And by the 20th century, animal testing had become an integral part of scientific research, with millions of animals being used each year in labs around the world. From testing new drugs and vaccines to studying diseases and genetics, animals have played a crucial role in advancing our understanding of the natural world. Animal testing has led to some major medical breakthroughs, saving countless lives in the process. But hey, that doesn't mean we can't continue to push for more humane alternatives and stride to minimize the suffering of our furry companions. I am a lover of both science and the well-being of all animals. Conflictions be damned. 
So, in saying all of that, where does Neuralink stand in the field of animal testing, and specifically monkey testing? Are they one of the worst, or a more run-of-the-mill type? Let's start with modern stats. There is simultaneously too much and not enough data on the subject. There are days of raw data one can comb through, but tangible statistics are, depressingly and to no surprise, somewhat skeptical. Take this graph from the World Animal Organization. It says the United States does the most testing on animals. While I don't doubt America's ability to do everything in bulk, it is also one of the most heavily recorded and reported countries in the developed world. It doesn't take much of an imagination to speculate big companies using animal testing in a cheaper environment and without prying eyes where checks and balances are as stable as the country's economy. But out of the total recorded 110 million animals being actively tested on in the world, according to science.org via 2018, almost 76,000 of those animals are monkeys, a trend that has been alarmingly growing. So of these 76,000 monkeys, how many perished? That number doesn't exist, but according to Humane Society International, most animals tested on are killed. Those that aren't are just subsequently used again for further experiments. So to say in simpler terms, they are guaranteed to die, with a few exceptions. Using these numbers, let's dive into Neuralink and put feet to flames. What's the number? A thousand? Two thousand monkeys? How many fucking monkeys you kill, Elon? Their blood's on your hands! Does that... Uh, uh... Who am I kidding? That type of shame doesn't work on him, does it? He was born rolling in bloody money from Emerald Mines. Citation being his own dad on a Daily Beast article. Anyway, I digress. What is the number? Elon says, not one. None, he says. Anyone dispute that? Wired, I see your hand in the back. I'd love to read your report, but you make me pay, so no. Instead, this article from New Republic will give us the deets from the Wired article. Quote, medical implant company Neuralink killed at least a dozen monkeys through animal testing after first subjecting the primates to horrifying conditions, despite founder Elon Musk's claim otherwise. Musk announced Wednesday, September 20th, 2023, that Neuralink was ready to start human trials, despite widespread concerns about the effects of the implant and the company's animal testing methods. But Musk had assured his followers that no monkey test subjects died due to the implant. Instead, Musk insisted that the company had conducted its earlier tests on monkeys that were already close to death. Except, it turns out that wasn't the case. That same day, Wired published its report that blew Musk's claim to bits. Musk's statement is, quote, ridiculous, and even a, quote, fabrication, a former Neuralink employee told Wired, speaking anonymously. Veterinary records show that as many as a dozen monkeys had to be euthanized after they were implanted with Neuralink devices because they developed agonizing complications, Wired reported Wednesday. The monkeys' issues included bloody diarrhea, partial paralysis, and cerebral edema, or brain swelling. One monkey dislodged an implant connector because it kept yanking at the device. When the veterinarians conducted surgery to repair the device, they found the implant area had become infected and couldn't be healed because the device was blocking their access. Another monkey kept picking at her implant until it bled and would repeatedly press her head on the floor in a sign of pain or discomfort. She became lethargic, opting to lie on the floor of her cage and hold hands with her roommate until she saw lab workers. Then she would start shaking uncontrollably. After she was euthanized, the necropsy revealed the implant had severely damaged her brain. Yet another monkey had to be euthanized after its implant screws became so loose that the whole device would easily be lifted out, according to the necropsy report. The report also said that the failure of this implant can be considered purely mechanical. Neuralink is already under two federal investigations over its animal testing practices. The Department of Agriculture opened an investigation in December of 2022. At the time, Reuters reported that Neuralink had killed about 1,500 animals during testing since 2018. 
the Department of Transportation opened another investigation in 2023 over allegations that Neuralink was transporting antibiotic-resistant pathogens in an unsafe manner." Unquote. I could scream, what the fuck is this hellscape of a lab? Or labs, as we'll soon learn. There's an episode of Veronica Mars that centers around a missing lab monkey and, spoilers, Veronica ends up finding out that one of the scientists stole the monkey and framed it on an animal rights activist to save the monkey's life. Because once their experiment was done, the scientists knew they would have to dissect the monkey. This is just how animal testing works. It's a well-known thing. But the treatment of these monkeys in particular would make God weep. Thing is, for all I know, this is the norm. I don't perform experiments. I'm not a scientist. Is the treatment Neuralink put its monkeys through the norm? All the scientists in the chat shout out. Before getting too sidetracked, let's move this little investigation along. According to Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, quote, through 2020, the company, Neuralink, paid $1.4 million to the University of California, Davis, to use its facilities. Only recently, after the Physicians Committee sued the university, did the troubling details of these experiments begin to come to light. The public records revealed that Neuralink and UC Davis staff failed to provide dying monkeys with adequate veterinary care, also used a substance known as bioglue, which was not approved for use in these experiments and has been widely known to be toxic to nerve tissues and failed to provide for the physiological well-being of monkeys assigned to the experiment. While Neuralink is no longer working with UC Davis, it is still conducting experiments on animals in its facilities in California and Texas, and the Physicians Committee is still engaged in a lawsuit to get access to photos and videos of these experiments." Unquote. Considering the world as we know it, these terrible accounts must not be a standout in the scientific field. Otherwise, this would be treated very differently in civil courts. There was one article I found about a German lab that got in hot water for its mistreatment of monkeys in a similar fashion. But I have to imagine a lot goes on without the public being informed, similar to slaughterhouses. If people were shown the actions that were taking place there on a regular basis, they would likely look for an alternative. I'm talking about me here, to be honest. I've mentioned this before, but I'm subject to the same old out of sight, out of mind element to eating meat. The process disgusts me, but I compartmentalize what I've seen, both through documentaries and in person on farms and such. I feel like the meat eating thing and animal experiments are a pretty one-to-one -one comparison because both activities diminish the animal's well-being, concluding in ending their lives, to benefit ours. At least that's the idea of why we do animal testing, to benefit humanity, right? I found this clear explanation online of what we do when experimenting on monkeys specifically, and ultimately why. Quote, Experiments involving non-human primates, or NHPs, include toxicity testing for medical and non-medical substances, studies of infectious diseases, such as HIV and hepatitis, neurological studies, behavior and cognition, reproduction, genetics, and xenotransplantation. Now, this quote is saying around 65,000 NHPs are used every year in the United States, and around 7,000 across European Union. Most are purpose-bred, while some are caught in the wild." Unquote. That's similar to farm animals. Their existence is for the machine of industry. Digressions aside, in that description for why we use NHPs in lab, anywhere in there did you hear, to advance technologies for commercial use? Me neither. So I thought to myself, okay, well, maybe potentially they've been tested on for vanity products? So I looked it up, but according to Humane Society International, quote, rabbits, guinea pigs, hamsters, rats, and mice are all sadly used in this way, while dogs and monkeys are never used to test cosmetics anywhere in the world. They're used to test other types of chemicals, unquote. So what does that tell us? It tells us that animals are tested on and killed to advance our scientific understanding and to advance vaccines and other facets of human flourishment, such as ways to save human lives. Neuralink, however, in no way will flourish human life. This technology is in no way going to advance our scientific understanding of our minds or how to help the human race at large. 
its development will only benefit the richest and dumbest 1% among us. Was it worth the monkey lies lost? Not by a fucking chance. Of the ways we have ruined and wasted animal life throughout history, Neuralink as a company is among the list of most useless. The potential for, say, those who are quadriplegic to more accurately access the internet and do things independent of aid is the silver lining, but what are the chances that this technology will be offered to them? I can't be the only one who feels ill toward wasted suffering. Suffering is a terrible thing in general, but if it went toward something, then that makes it worth it. Not moral, but worth it. Neuralink is not worth it in my mind. It is unethical, wasteful, and useless. People imagine it being more than it is, likely Elon among them, but the tech really is just a glorified trackpad in your mind. That's fucking dumb. Monkeys, money, and suffering should be spent elsewhere, or not at all. And there you go, my take on Neuralink. If you agree with me, great. If not, please let me know why. Where should the line be on how we treat animals? Listen guys, humans are not special. We are social, intelligent animals that deserve love. We deserve to feel comfortable, to find purpose, just like all other animals on Earth. To kill for food is a reality. To perform labor is a reality. Pain is a reality. Testing is a specific avenue in our society, and in my mind, while it shouldn't be put to a halt, it should absolutely be regulated to the fullest extent of the law. Because when given relaxed rules, humans, not in the room, detached, but in control, will force every corner to get cut to make their financial addiction go up, up, up. Number go up. Doesn't matter if workers under them are starving, they'll wage cut them and see their profits go up. Skip taxes, get bonuses, life is a game to them. It's not, obviously, but the system with which the human race functions under can be manipulated like one. There is only one pie, just different ways to cut it. We're all in this together, so give as much as you take or you're an asshole. One last thing, return to monkey. Go back, I want to be monkey! Okay, now I'm done. Thank you as always for watching my vids. I appreciate you all to no end. Make sure to like and subscribe for more monkey goodness. Remember to keep on thinking, and until next time, sleep well, fellow primates. Ciao for now. Peace.